welcome back again now we are going to discuss about the different features comparison between the on-premise sql server and the azure sql server so let's compare the uh, different offering uh, between the on-premise sql versus the sql as in azure so as we have discussed that here in the on-premise section, you need to manage the infrastructure, server patching, the, the networking and anything like that. The hardware, basically hardware related or the configuration software update, uh, you, you need to manage all those uh, by your own, by your administrator team. And all the cost goes to you when you go to the on-premise. Second is the SQL Server licensing and versioning update. Uh, so yes, you in that case again you need to bear the cost of licensing and the version and the patching update of the SQL Server if you are on the on-premise. So, and as we have mentioned that to manage the availability of your SQL servers, uh, the, you yes you do have the option to configure the always on on the on-premise so that always on connectivity is and the availability of the always on itself or the failure management that kind of management uh, typical management tasks you need to manage your own way then scaling and the performance so you need to invest money on or invest money and the resources on the scaling and the performance of the sql server it's so it's not only about optimizing the sql server performance by writing the application code or your sql server uh, sql queries uh, to to optimize the performance but to to also to upgrade the scaling servers like scaling your sql server itself for for example uh, moving from uh, 8 gb or 8 core machine to 16 core machine or 128 core machines uh, to get the better performance on a specific time zone uh, so that kind of thing let's say i have 8 core machines for my sql server and then now if i upgrade to 16 core and then um, that 8 core to 16 core requires only for a specific uh, time period, let's say in the, in the uh, summer period uh, when I run some sales on my website, then I, then I require 16 core. But what about the rest of the period? I don't need the 16 core, so, but still I need to invest money to, to upgrade to my all my servers and, and, and the, uh, to match the performance. That's uh, again, it's not a good offering, right? Next is the most important thing, like as the SQL Server is one of the most uh, critical part of your application because it holds the, your mission critical data, your transactional data. So you, you as an organization, you need to make sure that you are, you are choosing the right level of security and threat protections uh, against your data, which is being stored on on the location on your on premise. So that's a kind of uh, you know investment which any organization needs to uh, spend on to to deal with this kind of uh, to to make sure your secure data is secure and protected. Whereas if now we, let's if we compare this with the this on on premise uh, you know management versus the uh, sql azure as in service as i mentioned that the sql azure always run on the latest version of the sql server so you don't need to worry about upgrading the patching or anything like that it's, it's all managed by the sql server itself so let's say if there are any software installation runs requires on the windows machines or the machines on which your sql server is running so any software or management or patching management is requires to you know it, it is being stored by default by you uh, by managed by the microsoft azure itself and uh, as the backup and the re restore uh, so services or offerings microsoft provides you the automated updates provisioning and the backup and restore offerings wherein it keep on you know restoring or keep on taking up the uh, the database backup for a specified uh, period of time and then you, at any point of time you can go ahead and you know restore the backup uh, which is being stored uh, stored somewhere by the microsoft azure itself 
So that's that's a kind of things which has been built in, provided for you. So you don't need to invest any any resources on that. Any you know you, you don't need to pay any uh, investment on that particular thing. From the even if you talk about the availability and the, so the SQL Server provides the built-in always on feature, so you don't need to configure the always on available uh, for your SQL Server. So anytime when you create the SQL servers by default if you choose the standard tier and beyond your data gets copied from to at least three different uh, you you get once you store a data onto the sql server basically your data is, uh, is stored onto three different uh, location within the same region like in this case of a storage account like we discussed in the storage account section that your data when you choose the data even the lrs your data copies to three different locations within the same region so similar to sql similar to that sql server copies your data to three different physical locations in the same region by default so this makes you make sure that the availability is still there and even if you if you want to configure the disaster recovery to match the sla beyond a specific region you have option to choose the geo replication wherein you can replicate your data in a asynchronous mode from one geographic location to other geographic location we'll look at into the demonstration so next thing is about the the, the auto failure management so as i said that the uh, microsoft azure manages the sql server always on built in for you so that means that you don't need to manage or pay, you know, invest anything on managing the sql server failure and again this this we have discussed that the auto scaling and the cost optimization is already there so it has the built-in intelligence to provide the better cost optimization the good feature which i like i like about the sql server optimization uh, or the sql server azure as in service it provides the elastic query so initially when the sql server azure started uh, as a service I used to uh, create a database on the SQL server, but when I used to have the multiple database on the same server, then there was a, um, you know, bottleneck wherein I was not able to uh, create the uh, cross database queries or cross database joins, for example, and uh, if, if you have the multiple database in the same uh, server what, what you do typically you do in on the on-premise or like for example in on-premise you have one server you have multiple database let's say i have the user database or uh, and then i have the hr department database so i i i can the cross join the two different database using my join operations which was not typically uh it was not available when uh the microsoft azure sql service uh, started offering their services but now they have the option for uh, having the cross database queries using the elastic query which they are calling so elastic query is the uh, good feature which has been introduced in the recent release uh, so now you can have the ability to you know cross database query write the cross database queries and there are some additional features which are available to to the the sql server in azure as a service we'll discuss about the sql server uh, elastic 